Hello and welcome to Excel at English, where we will be looking at another of the AQ and Literature Paris Anthology texts in around five minutes. On this occasion, we are looking at the text Travelling to Paris with a Grandchild uh, by Gransnet. Um, in summary, in, on this text, a user, Jane Ann, is opening a discussion thread on the Gransnet travel forum, seeking advice about taking her grandchild to Paris. And over the next six days, she gets a variety of responses offering personal experiences, advice, hints and recommendation, and Jane Ann responds with lots of positive feedback. About two months later, Jane Ann reports back from her successful trip and engages in a little more discussion. And finally, the interaction is still continuing a few weeks later as new users comment on the thread. The context of this text is a written but interactive text and fundamentally you need to understand in order to uh, analyse this text that it has conversational features but in a written mode. Uh, the genre is an internet discussion forum and its purpose is to inform, to communicate, but it also has a very important social function in that people here are making friends and interacting socially. The audience for this text, as well as the producers, are grandparents, and as in um, conversational text, both the audience and producers are the same people. Uh, these people are mostly grandmothers. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they are middle class, family orientated. Um, they're taking their, their grandchildren to Paris. So um, yeah, I think it's fair to say that they're fairly affluent and probably well educated. The subjects are travel, family, uh, pickpockets and crime, tourism, traffic, some of the Parisian subjects that are touched upon. In terms of representations, the discussion on this forum offers a more balanced representation of Paris, um, mixing positive and negative aspects, and people don't have anything to sell on this text, so it's a little bit more credible. Um, pickpocketing, queues, traffic, some of the more negative aspects of Paris are represented, but often users are mitigating their negativity, um, trying to remain positive and um, looking at ways that these things, uh, these problems can be overcome, and that keeps the tone of interaction encouraging and positive. There are many positive representations of Paris as well, based on people's personal experiences, and that includes romantic views of the city or favourable catering arrangements, presumably something very important to you if you're in your 60s and taking a child to Paris. Um, the interactions between people are very representative of this as a social group. Um, the... Uh, this text has a social, as I discussed, as well as an informational function, and the users are self-representing themselves as friendly, helpful, um, and they are often uh, expressing their goodwill to one another. It's clear that this is a community in which users have a shared identity, and these interactions are um, showing a sense of this solidarity together. Um, they also use lots of whimsical little humour and ironic comments, and this is clearly a sign that people are enjoying this interaction. There are a lot of linguistic features um, within this text. This text is long and this text is complex, but a few that are really worth looking at are examples such as what I would describe as idiosyncratic orthography. So these are, I guess, non-conventional language uses. This is not a formal standard English text. And in this text, people are using language very flexibly and very individualistically as a way of replacing perhaps those paralinguistic features that we would use in a spoken conversation. There are no facial gestures, um, uh, hand gestures or tone of voice, uh, phonological features. Um, in this kind of interactive text, but these things are often simulated by some of these orthographical features. For example, by using italics or capitalization, you can add emphasis, which perhaps replaces the function that uh, tone of voice would do in a spoken conversation. Emojis are an important way of communicating uh, facial expression and a kind of an emotional tone to the text. There are also punctuation used in a variety of sometimes quite eccentric and individualistic ways, such as exclamation marks. They can be multiplied up to about four times, I think, at one point in this text. Um, ellipsis, which is a way, I suppose, of leaving what you are or uh, saying unfinished and inviting other people to join in. 
people are also using brackets in their interactions to add their personal remarks. There are plenty of ironic quotation marks, and these uh, are obviously implying particular meanings, such as some hotels being described as quaint, which I would say in the context of this interaction suggests that they are a bit crap. Um, with regards to the lexis and semantics of the words chosen and the kind of implied meanings, and as an informal interaction, we would expect to find lots of idioms and colloquial language, and we do. We have um, things such as mooching, we have um, uh, criminals described as heavies, uh, someone's grandson sleeps like a log, and if you're crossing the road, you take your life into your hands. Um, these are features of a conversational speech that lower the formality and make communication highly accessible to all uh, taking part. We also have some euphemistic uh, lexis, adding a touch of ironic humour to the register. Um, these grannies, they are generally quite polite about things, so they like to describe things in polite and inoffensive ways. Uh, the pickpockets are very creative, that's quite uh, a positive way to describe someone who's um, stealing from you. Driving around the Arc de Triomphe, someone describes it as exciting, uh, which I think is euphemistically saying that it was a near-death experience. And we also have uh, her experience of rude gesticulation, which is, um, I suppose, a rather formal way, perhaps a suspiciously over-formal way in the context of this text, of saying that someone stuck their middle finger up at you. Um, we also have acronyms within this text, uh, and these are really strong evidence of shared conventions and a kind of a group socialect. So uh, DGC stands for Darling Grandchild, and uh, SO is a significant other. These are also uh, quite euphemistic, um, slightly ironic um, uh, acronyms, but they uh, are used throughout these, these texts or these forums um, as a way of being perhaps the particular language, the language identity of this particular group. Um, in terms of pragmatics and also the way that the discourse structure unfolds, there's lots of evidence of politeness in this text, including the self-deprecation, um, um, people making jokes about their own fitness, which is a great way of reducing um, social distance and forming connections with people. Uh, there's lots of politeness in terms of um, responding um, very positively and offering encouragement to one another. The cooperative maxims are all in evidence, and I couldn't really find much evidence of them um, being flouted. Generally speaking, um, uh, the responses are short and to the point, and that serves the informational um, function of this text. We've also got a lot of turn-taking, so turn-taking a feature that we would expect to find in conversation. Uh, this turn-taking is managed through um, things like names or topic markers. Sometimes a conversational thread is being picked up on um, later, uh, i.e. so like in a non-sequential order. So by using the name of a particular respondent, um, it enables uh, the conversation to refer back um, perhaps to what's being responded to. There are things like um, question and answer formats as well, which serve the same kind of function. It's interesting to think of Jane Ann, who is the original poster, and how she has ownership of the discourse. And this is evident in a number of, in a way she's like the host of this discourse, and this can be seen in the range of speech acts um, that Jane Ann uh, uses to kind of manage the discourse in a sense. Um, she requests, she asks supplementary questions, um, she um, promises her, um, her her respondents uh, to give them a report back on. She thanks and praises um, people's contributions. Interesting to compare perhaps the way that she uses language uh, to the way that others. This is a good pragmatic analysis of, I guess, um, status within the text. Finally then, grammar. There are aspects of spoken language in this text, um, but these are represented in written form. As you will know, spoken language is um, much more um, fragmented uh, than um, standard written mode. And we see this fragmentation in the grammatical constructions in this text. There are a lot of incomplete constructions. Um, good evidence of this are uh, features like ellipsis, or particularly um, dashes used to tag comments on the end of sentences, um, which um, very much mimics a feature of spoken language, um, pr bringing together perhaps fragmented grammar. That's an awful lot of information on linguistic features, but as I said, this is quite a deep and challenging text. 
Finally, then, other connections um, uh, uh, to parts of the Paris anthology. There are um, representations of family in Just Another American or in French Milk, particularly mother-daughter relationships or mother-child relationships. Representations of Paris, particularly for children, are found in Not for Parents, which is a child-directed text, and The Rough Guide, which is purely informational. Um, other texts that share this informative function as discussed, guides um, including the Lonely Planet videos or um, Rick Steves' guided tour, uh, have a similar function to some of the informative stuff in this text. And then specific representations within this forum, things like street crime or um, the perils of Parisian traffic are represented elsewhere. That was Paris in five-ish minutes, although let's double it and call it ten. It's a complex text, but one that would be really rewarding because it's got a range of complex features which you can really give a meaty analysis to uh, if you know your stuff. Thank you once again for your attention. Um, please check the uh, playlist for all the other videos in this series. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. Bye!